Another aspect of what people are wanting to do with HDR is a super surrealistic look. So what they want to do is take images and push out the detail and push out um, the information to give sort of a really um, crunchy and surrealistic look to their images, similar to an effect like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our HDR workflow. I'm going to take these images together and from Bridge, go ahead and launch into Merge to HDR Pro and combine these images into a single uh, file. You'll notice that upon merging these images together, by default will be popped into the dialog, but further you're going to notice that the results are much nicer on default just by bringing the images into the um, dialog. Um, you'll see it's much more cleaned up on the right hand side here. We have all the controls to allow you to play with you know, the glow, a new control gamma allowing you to set the difference between highlight and shadows. You can set the exposure. Uh, detail levels here is where you would actually push out the detail, the push out the lines and the contrast, giving you that hyper surrealistic look. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just apply a quick preset. And you're going to see here that I have great details in the dark areas as well as in the highlighted areas. Um, now another new feature we have in the HDR dialog is the ability to remove ghosting. Now what ghosting is, is even if I've taken a p images on a tripod, you're going to get a little bit of blurring due to shifting p objects in your images or just slight shifts in pixels upon alignment. Um, notice here in the water you'll see the, the um, fish that's jumping out of the water isn't in every single image that I've taken. Further up here in the sky there's a bird here that isn't reflected properly in every image. Um, Deghosting will essentially remove the blurring um, and, and Photoshop will target a single image from which to reference all the other images by. You can see here that on default um, for this particular set of image, Photoshop didn't do such a great job at defining that reference image, but I can come in here and choose a different one. And you're going to see that you get much better results in terms of moving um, the ghosting or the artifacts from the differences in pixels for the various images. All right, let's switch fields now and talk a little bit about the improvements we made with our painting tools. Um, say I have this particular photo here that I'm creating for a backdrop and I want to give it more of a painterly effect and create something like this. Well now in Photoshop you're able to do this much more easier. I can take this photo and essentially we have this new tool called the mixer brush. Now what the mixer brush does is allows me to realistically blend colors together on canvas. So um, it resides in the same uh, tool slot under the brush tool. I'm going to choose my mixer brush here. And the easiest way to tackle this is up here in the options bar we have some presets. And essentially what these presets do is they define um, how wet your canvas is in addition to how much paint you're going to be picking up from the canvas and mixing it in with the colors in your brush. So let's go ahead and choose a wet um, heavy mix for now. What that means is I'm essentially going to define my canvas to be very wet so the colors will be quite wet on canvas and I can blend them together and create things like this and blend uh, colors together in a nice fluid and easy way such as this. And a high mix essentially means that I'm picking up a lot of the paint from the canvas and mixing it into the colors that I have in my brush so I'm not actually going to be introducing a lot of new colors. I'm just going to be blending the colors around on canvas. I can do something more dramatic like this so you can see the effects where I'm actually uh, blending the colors together on canvas. Let's un undo that. Um, now if I want to introduce new colors, um, I can certainly do so. Um, first let me show you a new uh, heads up display we have for a color picker with simple keyboard shortcut commands. I can come in here and choose my uh, brightness and saturation values and then with the spacebar key I can come in here and switch over and adjust my hue as well. So I can choose a different new color and I can introduce that into canvas. Um, further I can um, alt click to define multiple colors on a single tip. So right then you saw me pick a color and I picked purple and you can see that this icon up here in the options bar shows me what color I have loaded in my brush. Now I can actually uh, define multiple colors on a single tip so I can come in here and alt let's click alt click here and notice that icon in the upper left changing um, with the colors that I'm defining um, on my brush and if I want to come in here and introduce this new range of colors on canvas I'm going to drop down my mix ratio a little bit to somewhere around 70 
and you can see here that let's go ahead and uh, paint in you can see I can introduce new colors on canvas um, I can do something a little bit more dramatic let's go ahead and choose something pretty saturated I'll choose a red here and you can see here that I'm actually introducing uh, red color blends into my uh, canvas paints now the other aspect of the painting improvements we have is uh, with bristle tips now what bristle tips are essentially uh, physically uh, simulated bristles that you have where it allows you to paint nice textured strokes. Now um, in my brush panel I have several uh, new presets here containing the bristle tips and in the upper left hand corner if you have OpenGL enabled you'll see a visualization of these tips as well as the angle or pressure that I'm using um, with my uh, pen. Now, um, not only can I change, you know, the basic brush shape, so you can see as I'm scrolling through here the different presets, I got my fan brush, I have my uh, pointy brush, as well as my flat tip, etc. But I could also come in here and define uh, different bristle properties. So I come in here and adjust the density of my bristles. Let's go ahead and choose something different. Um, I could adjust the length. Um, of my bristles, um, the thickness of each individual bristle, the stiffness, etc., or plasticity. Um, and this allows me to do things like create nice textured strokes on canvas. Um, much easier. So I can simply pick up a preset, define the bristle quality that I'm looking for, and uh, paint with these nice textured um, effects. Now I want to point out that the bristle tips can actually be used with many of our brush tools right here. I'm using it with the mixer brush, but I can certainly come in here and use my, my, my basic brush tool and apply the bristle tips to it, or dodge and burn, erase tool, etc. All of those tools can um, use the bristle tips. So you can see it's pretty powerful um, using the bristle tips in conjunction with the mixer brush. It allows me to create pretty compelling paintings like this. Um, a couple other cool tidbits that we have for painting is with our sampler tool. I can now um, click and show a sampling ring. And essentially what the sampling ring does is shows me my previously picked color as well as the color that I want to change it to against that gray um, neutralizing background color. I can turn this option off, show sampling ring, if I don't want to see it. And lastly, a great improvement that we have is with uh, dynamically resizing brushes and hardness with a single shortcut. So now I can come in here and change my uh, brush size with horizontal movements and with vertical movement I can adjust hardness, the same single um, keyboard stroke, uh, shortcut. Okay, so another great feature that we have um, in this release, it's a feature that was actually highly requested from our video customers, is one that we actually got back in this release, and that is with our ability to import animated GIFs now. We lost this back when ImageReady merged with Photoshop, and I'm really happy to say that now it's back in Photoshop CS5. So everything that I've just spoken to um, or shown you um, is included in Photoshop CS5. We have some features important for video professionals in Photoshop CS5 extended as well, particularly with um, our ability to create easy 3D extrusions using Adobe Repose. Um, further, with these 3D objects, you can certainly animate them as well as add some new animation effects such as depth of field effect and animate that as well as um, adding video layers to your image-based lights, also new in Photoshop CS5 Extended. I urge you to check out these videos on Adobe Repose, creating 3D through Adobe Repose as well as um, animating a depth of field effect and image-based lights. Thank you.